The modern world is a stressful place. It is now 90% more likely that you'll die because of a stress-induced heart attack than due to war, terrorism, plague, cancer, being mauled by pandas, freak piano accidents, auto-erotic asphyxiation mishaps, or clown rampages put together. Some have said the world would be a less stressful place if people didn't keep making up statistics, but I have found a better solution. I have found three games so relaxing that each of them makes you feel like you're sitting on a warm beach listening to whale music and wearing the skin of someone who's recently wronged you as a hat. In Zenbound 2, you're given a block and a piece of rope, which emerges from a fixed point on the screen. You rotate the block using the mouse, causing the rope to wind around the block. Wherever the rope touches the block, it adds a pleasant dash of paint to the wood, increasing your score. It is your job to paint the maximum amount of block with the minimum amount of rope. There are some variants as well. In some levels, there are nails in the block, which emit a splash of paint when the rope touches them, or in some others, the rope has paint sacks at strategic points along it. This adds some welcome variety and a nice tactical element. The gameplay is simple enough that it's instantly accessible but elegant enough to give considerable long-term appeal. There are over 100 levels, most of which won't take you more than a minute to complete, but replayability is a big factor. I found myself regularly returning to this hedgehog block because I love the way the puzzle was laid out. The level of challenge is also very carefully gauged. Many of the later blocks are laid out so you can't just spin the block and hope for the best. You're never given a time limit though, and the lovely slow music encourages you to go at a slow pace. Zenbound 2 managed to hold my interest without becoming challenging enough that I actually had to plan ahead. This may sound like a bizarre compliment, but in a game designed to relax you, you shouldn't have to think three moves ahead. Zenbound 2 is £3.50 on Steam, which is remarkably cheap considering the amount of content on offer. Unless you're the sort of gamer who isn't happy unless they're killing something, I definitely recommend trying it. Playing Windows Hill, I felt like I was back in my childhood home and I was being read a bedtime story. It's a weird collection of vignettes which feel surreal but really nice to play. It's essentially a puzzle game. Your job is to get a small truck from a door on the left hand side of the screen through a door on the right. To get through the door on the right, you'll have to get your hands on a square white block which will unlock the door. Sometimes it's hiding in plain sight, sometimes it's hidden, sometimes you'll have to get hold of it by solving a puzzle. The puzzles aren't very challenging, often involving more trial and error than anything else, but it feels very pleasant to play. It feels like you're being told a surreal story by someone who's making it up as they go along, but at the same time it all makes sense. There's not a whole lot to windowsill, but that's okay, because it only costs a paltry £2. Over the time I've owned it, I've played four hours of it, which is remarkable value for money. Windowsill is sweet, entertaining, surreal, has some nice puzzles, and is very relaxing. For £2, I'd say it's definitely worth a look. Auditorium dropped onto Steam a few days ago, and it spent its time alternately relaxing and driving me insane. The idea is you have to direct coloured streams of light to correspondingly coloured receptors, which play a fraction of a tune when enough light is hitting them. You're given tools that bend the light, speed it up, reflect it, trap it, and so on. Auditorium is easily the most game-like of the three games in this review. This is both good and bad. It's good because there's a proper structure, there's progression, and the puzzles get progressively harder as the game goes on. The problem with that comes when, in the later levels, you inevitably get stuck. This doesn't happen often, and it's usually more than possible to force a solution to a puzzle, but considering this review is supposed to be about relaxing games, the frustration of being stalled by a puzzle is a big problem. What helps offset this problem is the music. It's fantastic. Each level is divided up into multiple sections, and in each one you unlock an extra part of a simple song. So in part one you might get a basic piano riff, in part two you might unlock the cello accompaniment, and so on. Because of the constantly changing puzzle mechanics, Auditorium has easily the best long-term appeal out of these three games, but then it is the most expensive. I say expensive, it's £5, which is a pathetically small amount for a game with these visuals, these puzzles, and this soundtrack. All three of these games lowered my blood pressure to such a degree I can't do anything but recommend them all. They're all incredibly cheap and charming. They each have their problems, but considering you can buy all of them for less than the price of a single piece of Railworks free DLC, I'd say they're definitely worth investing in. 